Hey everybody, welcome back to the King Kane Way TV. It's me, King Kane. I just got out the shower, getting ready to do my hair. I have a big meeting in a few hours. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and come to you guys and give a review of The Real Housewives of Atlanta, Season 12, Episode 5. Finally, the show is picking up. Finally, some tea is getting spilled. Finally, there's something that I can, I can talk about. Shit. The first five episodes, to me... Um, I don't know, really didn't do it for me, but, uh, now I see that we are picking up. So at the beginning of the episode, Cynthia, she calls Portia and invites her to the Bailey queue, which is going to be held at Lake Bailey again. Uh, we all know that Cynthia is infamous for her Bailey queues, you know, the one last season. There was a lot of shit going on between Marlo and Eva. Eva was being shady, not owning it, lying, um, uh, per usual, so I was really eager to see uh, what the Bailey cube was going to be giving this time around. Um, Nene is not invited to the Bailey cube, obviously. Um, her and Cynthia are still not in a good place at this time um, during the season. So, you know, that's that. Uh, Portia throws a little fun shade at Eva because Cynthia and Portia, they discuss like, oh, well, you know, I need to bring my kids and... You know, this, that, and the third, you know, Cynthia did not want them to bring their kids, her or Kenya, but she said that they both could come. So, it's whatever. Um, but Portia was just like, well, girl, you ain't got to worry about Eva bringing her kids because, hell, the energy might not be right. And so, I thought that that was funny because, you know, Eva don't bring her kids places where she don't know people and she don't know what the energy and the group energy is going to be like, even though it's a child's party. Um... That's weird. That's weird. But, you know, just to sum that scene up, Cynthia really didn't want, you know, children there because she doesn't want it to turn into daddy fucking daycare, which I totally get. Like, y'all, don't bring y'all kids to this grown-up party shit. We finna turn up and do us. The fuck? <sighs> Anywho. Next, we see Portia. She is a key at this goddamn workout with the baby. Uh, she's pretty much twerking that ass. Um... Turning up with the white folks, you know, PJ is just sitting right there in the little swallow thing she got her in looking so uninterested. PJ is totally not here for the shenanigans. Um, I think PJ is probably going to be like a chill person because PJ just do not have the team. Period. PJ is not for the fuck shit. Her face says it all. Um, she's crying. She's agitated. Even when Portia gets her out of the little carrier thing, she's still over it. Um, Kenya comes in with Brooklyn. Brooklyn comes in looking so cute, so pretty. Um, she, Kenya also has um, Brooklyn in one of those little things like that to like keep her secure or whatever because they're like dancing and working out and etc. Cetera, et cetera. Um, Kenya and Portia, they have a conversation where basically Kenya opens up about her marriage to Portia, about how they're not having sex. And it's just like, what the fuck? You want the baby in the goddamn bed. And I keep saying that. You guys have been watching my reviews. You should know how I feel about Mark. I feel that he's a punk. And I feel like he's trade. And I just kind of feel like he don't want to have sex with you. Like, if this man, every time you try to get this man some puss, he turns, his, he turns away. He wants the baby in the bed. Girl, you better let it go and go get dicked down by some young, period. That's what I would do. Hell, fuck Mark. Um, Kenya starts crying while she's discussing this to Portia. Um, but to me, I don't know if y'all caught it, but it seemed like Portia paid it dust. You know, Portia's just like, well, girl, come on. Let's just get on the go and yada, yada, yada. And I'm like, damn, Portia, you ain't going to... Speak no type of, but she Portia going through her own thing. So Portia in her head, she probably like, girl, I can't sit here and talk to you about your man when I'm going through with mine. Okay, be clear. So maybe that was Portia's, you know, thought process. Maybe so. I don't know. Next we see Kylie. Not Kylie. I said fucking Kylie. We see Candy. She's dropping Riley off in New York City. Um, she's going to be interning with Candy's entertainment lawyer. That's what's up. See, this type of shit, when you got it, put on for your kids. Make sure your kids get what they get. Uh, Riley wants to be a lawyer. The apartment is sickening. She's in a high-rise apartment in New York City. Two bedrooms, six Gs a month, which, I mean, it's nothing for Candy. Candy got it, you know? Candy feels like, shit, you do good in school, you can get the world. And I feel like that was Candy's only child for a long time. And I don't feel like Riley is a bad kid. So I feel like, shit, if you're doing good in school and I got it, you're going to get it. 
Like, period. That's how I am with my nieces and nephews. Like, show me them grades and show me their conduct. Period. Anywho, um, there's a family friend that's going to stay with her. Um, who's going to be looking out for her. This girl is 18 and older. Um, she looked like she was a grown woman. So I'm assuming, uh, you know, they're going to turn up and, you know, have a good time. And she's going to look out for Riley. And, you know, because Candy's like, I can't be here like that. So it's good that, you know, she'll be there. She'll have a babysitter, but not a babysitter. So that was kudos to Candy. You know, I think Candy's a great mom. She's a great businesswoman. She's just boring a little bit. That's all. Um... The parenting styles with Candy versus Todd, you know, Candy said that she she gives Riley the world as long as Riley's doing good. So, um, you know, when it comes to, you know, Todd and Kaylin, just the way he's raised his family, he just feels like, oh, no, you know, that's too much for a child or this, that, and the third. And, you know, honestly, Todd, a.k.a. Marvin, it, it's, it, the, the world is changing. You know, everybody don't live in, in the Bronx, New York, where you're from. You know, people want nice things. People have parents who have a little coin who want to give them the world. So I just feel like, shut up. And you could use you could use a little tender love and care because on the next the sneak peek of next week, it looked like your daughter Kayla telling you you don't give no affection. So, get on your shit, daddy. A.K.A. Marvin. Hell. Um, anywho, next we see Nene at Casa Leaks. Marlo comes over. Um, she tells Marlo that she gets where she's coming from. Um, but Cynthia has a whole nother side to her. And I felt like you were trying to get me to apologize, you know, for basically going on interviews and you know, giving my rebuttal to what Cynthia is saying on her interviews. And so, you know, Marlo receives it. And, you know, they're just sitting there kicking. They're eating. You know, Nene has sandwiches. Like, she got a whole little spread set up. Really, really, really cute. I love when they get, uh, they go to each other's home. And that person, like, has, like, this cute little spread for them to, like, chit-chat. And, you know, just chill and be copacetic. I absolutely love it. Um, Yovana comes. Um, and Marlo is really trying to be the peacemaker uh, between Cynthia and Nene. Meanwhile, Giovanna breaks it down to Nene and Marlo, telling them that she she went to uh she went to Cynthia's little um little uh her little wine cellar, and basically Cynthia was just running her down. And I'm like, Giovanna, girl, you like you gonna say at the baby queue later on? That's just what bitches do. So why are you even going back repeating that? Like you just grown and you just messy for no reason. Like Nene knows Cynthia probably going around here saying shit about her. Nene doing the same goddamn thing. Like y'all need to get off Cynthia neck. Like if she gonna if Nene gonna talk her shit how she's done for years, Cynthia can be able to talk her motherfucking shit too. Period. So girl, bye. You know your mother that wasn't really needed. Um, I don't know what you're trying to do. Um, but it looks like you're just here to stir up the pot. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Um, they get into the whole scent, scent, how, you know, the, Cynthia's other side, her name is Scent, Scent. And then he said, that's the hood rat. And then he said, that's the one that curse and talk shit and talk about everybody. And I can believe that. It's always those people who try to act like they so nice and sweet, who are really malicious, really mean, really evil, really two-faced, they really act like they're your friend when they're not. Like, it's really people like that in this world. So, beware and 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 and, and stay cautious. Um, I'm just, I don't know. I just feel like, you know, um, Marlo's like, you know, I'm here for everyone. Um, and it's just like, you know, we'll see how long you keep this up. Because, you know, we all know Marlo's not that girl who's like friendly or nice or whatever. That's not that's not what we've known her to be on the show. So honestly to see Marlo take this approach this season has been refreshing. You know, and I live for Marlo a little more. I really do. Um anywho, Portia talks to Mama Diane about getting a nanny. Uh Diane has pretty much been watching PJ while Portia's at work at Dish. And Portia's still having to come home. They talk about the nanny and how Portia's like, well, shit, I got to hire a nanny, but I need time. Like, I need this bitch to be able to communicate with me, Dennis, you know, the baby, go back and forth. Like, it's just a lie. And the mama like, girl, find you a nanny. I'm going to the interviews with you because, baby, I know you can be picky. And what I'm not going to do is just be no 
babysitter. But, you know, Portia received it. You know, she know her mama got her own business and her own tea to handle. So, girl, ain't nobody got time to be sitting around watching kids. Or put P, put PJ little ass in uh daycare, hell. But y'all got a coin. So, girl, go find you a nanny. I'm sure you know plenty of people who can refer you to people. <sighs> Shut up with that. Um, anywho... It's the day of the Bailey Q. Um, Candy and Candy goes over to Kenya's house, and they pretty much just talk. Um, Kenya tells Candy how she's gonna regift the doll from Eva, how Eva gave the doll to Brooklyn, but you know she's not really here for it. She don't really give a fuck about it, girl. Take your motherfucking uh, uh, doll back, bitch. If you wanna say all this about me, so you know we're not cool. You don't like my energy. My child don't need a gift from you. And I feel like, yeah, I understand where Kenya coming from. But like Candy said, like, girl, just throw the fucking gift away. Like, why do you even have to do all that? But this is Kenya Moore who we're talking about. And we all know that Kenya Moore is insane. Um, Candy, uh, Candy doesn't really care. You know, she's just like, well, shit. Okay, do you. Um, Eva and Cynthia, they talk. Um, they tell her... Well, once Eva gets to Cynthia's house, uh, Cynthia starts telling Eva how Kenya and um, Portia wanted to bring their kids. And at first she was like, no. And then, you know, she told them, uh, yeah, and how Kenya had the attitude afterwards. Like, first of all, Kenya, what what, what tea of that is, 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 what any business of that is goddamn me, uh... Eva, the broke diva. That ain't Eva's tea that your homegirls wanted to bring their kids and you said no, but then you changed your mind. Like, you do be being low-key messy, Cynthia. Like, bitch, ain't nobody asked you all that. You just volunteering information. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> I can't stand Cynthia from time to time. I hate that fake weak acting shit, but you know you really a mean-ass bitch deep down inside. I don't like that. Um, um, and then Eva's like, oh, well, it takes one to know one. Because, you know, Cynthia said that Kenya called her mean for not wanting her to bring her child. So, you're Eva's throwing shade. Um, and then, you, you, then you're like, oh, you know, I know you're late life, baby. And you're late in life. And this, that, and the third. Basically coming for Kenya, just now having a baby. You know, Eva is very malicious. And this is the type of shit that everybody be sleeping on. And, 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 and like I've always said, it would be different if Eva, the broke diva, would own her shade and say, yeah, I fucking said it, bitch. I don't give a fuck. But Eva is not that type of bitch, which makes it look weak and which makes it look forced. And makes it look extra. If you was a real ass bitch, you can say, shit, this is what I said. And I said what I said. And, and I mean, that's how I felt. But you don't do that. It's always a back pillow. It's always, no, I did it. I didn't mean it. When I say that, like, girl, go somewhere. Honestly, you're not a real bitch. Um, and I just don't feel like there's any place for Eva in this circle. However, if she were to own her shit... Like I've always said, there would be room for you because I stand those type of bitches. I stand those type of bitches who I said it and but see, Eva's just not that girl, and that's why there's no room for her at the table. Um, oh, I just feel like she's dirty. Cynthia laughing, you know, that's that other side to her. That's that mean malicious side. You sit up there laughing and telling Eva T about Kenya and Portia. I can't. Next, we see Tanya, Candy, Mal, and Kenya arrive. You know, everyone speaks to each other. You know, it's real light and cute and fun right now. Um, Yavonna comes looking dirt cheap, like something out of a goddamn body shop. Uh, Yavonna needs a stylist. Um, she's definitely, she gives Shamari teas, um, but that's a whole other story. So, anyways, all the girls are outside talking um, about, guess what, you know who, Nene, about her and Nene, about Cynthia and Nene, how they been into it and how they saw her on the float. And, you know, it was kind of awkward because they had just saw the interview where she was calling Cynthia definitely weak. Um, weak. So, you know, they was just gagging at that. Yovana says that Nene was just hurt in her interviews. And friends talk about friends. That's what happened, bitch. When you came, when I came to your shop and you was talking about it, you was upset. That's your friend. You know, it is what it is. That's just what girls do. And everybody's like, no, friends don't talk about friends. Friends don't talk about friends. I'm like, y'all shut the fuck up. Y'all know y'all done said something about y'all, bitch, before. Stop. 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 
Don't be trying to make your one out to be the crazy eyeball out when that's some real shit. And Cynthia, that's what you did. You talked about your friend. Hell. Um, anywho, Cynthia pretty much reads Yovana down, uh, basically saying, don't make it seem like I don't want to found you under a rock, like I was sorting you out to have a conversation about Nene or anything. Catch it? Don't make it seem like I sought you out to do what? Anything. Because, baby, I told you how I feel, and if you want to take it back, then that's totally fine. But what I'm letting you know is, don't make it seem like I was just... And your mom's like, no, Cynthia, I didn't say that. Cynthia, Cynthia. Y'all, see, Cynthia don't, Cynthia don't show these hoes this season. Y'all at least sit, sit alone. That's that hood rat. That's that hood rat. Sometimes you got to show a bitch you're not to be fucked with. Period. Period. <laughs> and that's just that. Um, Portia comes with PJ. And Kenya gives Portia the gift from Eva. And Portia's just like not here for it. Like, girl, I don't know why you regifted me this goddamn gift. Like, we need to go outside and fix this. Like, what is going on with you and um, Eva? Like, girl, that's childish. And Kenya's like, well, baby, I ain't got to fix nothing. Like, the bitch came for me. Like, I... I agree with Kenya when it comes to her versus Eva. Like, bitch, you came from me, ho. How are you feeling any type of way or think it's cute to come from me, ho? But I can't come for you. So I'm going to need Kenya to become the Kenya that we all know and get Eva motherfucking ass together. Because if nobody else can do it, you're the bitch to do it. So I need you to hurry up and push through and do it. God damn it. Um, Shamia and Tanya are shook it because they're like, oh, my God, I can't believe you're regifting this gift. Um... So they go back outside, and Eva starts back pedaling. Um, King is just like, girl, you don't want a problem with me. I feel like you're trying to make a problem with me. Um, and Eva's like, well, I, they didn't tell you the right thing. That's not what I said. That's not how I feel. I mean, and then on the, fat, the clip back, the flashback, it showed that actually Cynthia used the words, you just want to make sure the energy is right. So... I mean, I don't know. And I don't I mean at the party I don't think Kenya was being malicious or being mean or trying to be nasty. I just think that that just the energy word that had came up. Um so you know, they really didn't get to a resolution, but it's like Kenya just paid the dust after Eve was like, girl, it wasn't directed at you. So I mean it is what it is, we can move forward. Um Kenya brings up old news about Eva versus Cynthia. Um, it's obviously it's obvious that Cynthia is definitely Team Eva because while Kenya's trying to make her point about Eva being a fake ass bitch, like I'm unclear about you and how you and Cynthia are so cool now when you were talking about her last year. And Cynthia's like, well, we move past that. And Kenya's like, girl, like you need to chill. Like let me finish. Like you're riding a little too hard for Eva when Eva was just low key reading you last season. And I mean. She has a point. I mean, these are all facts. Be very clear. Be very clear. Um, so it just looks like that's probably going to keep growing. So we'll see what that is going to be giving. Um, Marlo. Marlo comes. And, you know, she sits down. She's, you know, she speaks to everyone. Next, we see her and Marlo. We see Marlo versus Eva. Um, Eva's basically saying, like, oh, girl, um, you're mean, you're, you say stuff because you're mean, and, and Eva's like, well, I mean, no, Marlo, Eva told Marlo, girl, you say mean shit because you're a mean person, and Marlo like, nah, I say the shit that all y'all be thinking, but y'all don't want to say, and then, uh, and then Marlo's like, well, girl, you don't say half the shit that you think because you're fake, and that's the truth, you're a fake-ass bitch, Marlo, get this whole together, like, Eve, I don't know who you are or who you think you are, but you're definitely not that girl. And you look stupid. Like, you honestly look dumb. Um, Marlo, to me, was really trying to be nice and, 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 and play nice with the girls. Because at first, you know, they, they what started the whole argument. They got into just conversation about, you know, how people are and things like that. And... You know, Marlo was like, well, you know, it's not your energy. You know, it's just your actions. Like, I'm over your actions at this point. And then, you know, that's what started that whole situation with Marlo versus Eva. Um, Eva was like, well, I'm going to get up and go. And Marlo was like, bye. Like, girl, you always running off. You can never own shit you say. You always want to leave. You living above your means. Um, and then Eva was like, she ain't never been pregnant. She don't know what that life is like. Girl, gone. That's the only thing you can say, that Marlo don't have kids and a baby. Like, so what? Like, that's not everything. Some people don't want kids. Some people don't want a baby. Like, girl, get the fuck on. Bye. Leave. We don't give a fuck about you. Um, 
Marlo and Mal tell uh, Cynthia that Kenya talks to her crazy um, because, you know, Cynthia attaches herself to these strong personalities. And, you know, sometimes you let these friends of yours, what's the word? You let these friends of yours do shit that you normally won't let other people do. And, yeah, I mean, we all know that about Cynthia. We all know she's weak and weird, but I guess that's just par for the course for her. Um, then next, we see a little bit of Kenya versus Marlo because Kenya's trying to explain her part. Well, no, look how y'all don't know how Cynthia was talking to me early on the phone when I told her I was trying to bring my child. Like, Cynthia is very opinionated and a strong person. Marlo was just like agreeing, like, yeah, you know, Nene says that too. Like, that is the truth. Like, yeah, like, that's the case. And then Kenya's like, girl, Marlo, let me finish talking. So Marlo, like, hold up, bitch. Like, y'all, y'all at the table done talked a million times. Don't be trying to check me and come here and be boss because, bitch, you're not a boss. And Kenya's like, I'm a boss everywhere I go. And Marlo's like, well, shit, you ain't a boss at home with Mark. You're very passive and submissive over there. Be passive and submissive here. And I agree, Marlo. I totally agree, bitch. Don't come around here trying to be all big and bad when, bitch, you at home crying and lying and sad and through over your husband. Don't try to come around here and be that girl. Keep that same energy you have with your husband. But obviously, Kenya, you know, she has nothing to say to Marlo about Marlo's opinion. Uh, I mean, what Marlo had to say. So, sit there and shut up. I really couldn't deal um, by Cynthia with this speech about how you'll get everybody together. Everybody laughed at you. Portia said, girl, bye. Because we all know you're nothing. You're not going to get nobody together. Um, they have game time where they give away shady awards. Like, who's the most thirsty? Who's the most shady? Who's the most insecure? Things like that. Um, and who's the best twerker? Um, but it gets interesting when Kenya nominates Marlo for being most thirsty. And Marlo was like, huh, how am I thirsty? And Kenya's like, well, you always look for attention. You say things that are not true. And Kenya's like, well, girl, you're the one that had a Kenya more hair care event. And there was water in the thing. So you won't tell the truth either. And Candy and some other girl who sit next to her are just laughing. They are me because, girl, I would be gagging and dead at these girls. So these girls would really be going at it. Like, I literally can't. But one thing about it, Marlo going to come back with her quick reads, period. Let's be very clear. Um... Tanya was nominated as most thirsty by Marlo, and Yovana chimed in saying, yeah, you know, Nene feels like you're thirsty too, feel like you do the most. I totally don't feel like Tanya is thirsty. I don't know where that came from or what type of shit Tanya been doing, but I totally don't feel that Tanya is thirsty. But, you know, that's just my opinion. I don't really know what goes on behind the scenes. I could be wrong, um, but honestly, that's just how I feel. Um... Tanya and basically let's goddamn y'all want to know like girl like don't be coming back here repeating stuff that Nene say or think like that's messy we don't care so then Portia like well girl y'all want to you thirsty like have y'all seen her Instagram you Nene mouth like you just girl you thirsty take your award and let's keep it moving um th there was a beautiful moment about who's the most insecure um, and, you know, I think that Marlo was really trying to be positive and uplift the moment, but, you know, the girls were just like, girl, I feel like, Candy, like, girl, I feel like I'm on the hill. Candy, little low-key messy ass, just ready for shit to pop off again so she can laugh mm -hmm. and sit there and be bored and not have a storyline. <sighs> but, anywho, so we'll see next week. Um, the show is picking up. I'm totally excited. I thank you guys for watching my review. I finished my hair. Um, so I'm about to start my day, so please subscribe to my goddamn channel, like this video, and also leave your comments, your thoughts, your opinions, or whatever the fuck you want to say, read me, you know, some of y'all be trying it, um, but you know, I accept all reads, um, it is what it is, so I thank you guys for fucking with me, follow me on all of my social media in the description, Mwah. peace.